Namaste and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. We wanted to share some news that happened recently here in the U.S. Um, mainly because it it's talking about putting resolutions on Kashmir and, um, and kind of putting India again back in the limelight and not in a positive manner. So um, we know recently uh, Minister Jay Shankar came to visit and he did not meet with Congresswoman Pramila J. Paul because she is moving these resolutions through the U.S. Uh, congressional hearings and through the House. So we are don't want to see, you know, these things happening, but we also feel like she has really put herself as a Indian American, first Indian American woman to be in Congress. And so we try to find out a little bit more about her and to share with you as well. So you can make decisions if you're here in the U.S. or give her a call if you also don't agree with her trying to put resolutions on Kashmir that might end up putting sanctions on Kashmir. Um, we know Trump won't probably sign it to put it through, but things might change next year and um, we feel like if she is an Indian born uh, now an American citizen a congresswoman um, you know if you can't do good things for your home country don't don't do bad things for them this we feel like is just putting not only a negative on Kashmir but negative again back on India and so um, we put together these clips on her a little bit personal a little bit her background and and why why is she trying to um you know put resolutions on Kashmir so let's start this up India's external affairs minister Jay Shankar refused to meet Indian American congresswoman Pramila J. Paul for moving resolutions on Kashmir in the house um, responses from other Democrats have been efforts to silence Pramila Jabhal are deeply troubling. The U.S. and India have important partnership, but our partnership can only succeed if it's rooted in honest dialogue and shared respect for religious pluralism, democracy, and human rights. And other Democrats have also said, and these people are also running for president, shutting out U.S. lawmakers who are standing up for human rights is what we expect from authoritarian regimes, not the government of India. So now they're saying wrongly about India as well. And many other Democrat leaders have had similar statements are all going against India and India's external minister, Jay Shankar's word. Hey, uh, I mean I'm aware of that uh, draft resolution. I don't think it's a fair understanding of the situation uh, in, in Jammu and Kashmir uh, or a fair characterization of uh, what the government of India is doing. Uh, and I have no interest in meeting her. A very, very wide cross-section uh, of uh, members of Congress and political leaders outside the Congress. Uh, so, so I wouldn't, uh, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't take a few voices and uh, necessarily reach a sweeping conclusion which your question seems to suggest. U.S. Congresswoman Pramila J. Paul's Kashmir report lacks fair understanding of German Kashmir, in his own words. But who is Pramila J. Paul? Is she anti-India? She was born in Chennai, India in a Malaya family and raised in Indonesia and Singapore. She immigrated to the United States in 1982 at the age of 16 to attend college. Married twice, has child from previous marriage, choose recently to report her pregnancy. J. Paul founded Hate Free Zone after the September 11 attacks on the advocacy group for immigrant groups. This is what she's known for here. She's also known for successfully preventing the deportation of over 4,000 Somalis across the country. Been arrested for protesting President Trump's immigration policies defending illegals. Um, as you know, this issue is very important Let's to hear me what as she the has first to Indian say. American woman uh, to be elected to she the House. She's playing the I'd minority like card. With, um, she always starts with, with you, that. Mr. Uh, ben Cosme. Did I say it right? 
Um, reports show that over 4,000 people were arrested following the decision to revoke Jammu and Kashmir's special status. And one of those individuals that I spoke about in the last panel that was here, um, detained without charge, is Dr. Mubeen Shah, the uncle of my constituent in Seattle. Amnesty International so has friend. said that the Public Safety Act, which allows for detention for up to two years, and this is a quote, circumvents the criminal justice system in Jammu and Kashmir to undermine accountability, transparency, and respect for human rights. Very concerned about the things that you uh, mentioned in your testimony around human rights organizations being targeted by the Indian government. I have heard this from other places as well. Can you tell us how does the Public Safety Act contribute to she inflaming dividing tensions Kashmir from between India? the state authorities and local Kashmiris? Thank you for that question. Um, people we spoke to on the ground say that they're not afraid, that what they're afraid of is the Indian security forces, that they feel that many of their voices have been taken away from them. Uh, one person we spoke to feels that politics, as they know it, is now dead in Kashmir because their entire political leadership has either been detained or forced to sign away any affiliation with politics. Um, you know, the fact that people who wanted to peacefully protest were then being either harassed or detained, um, I think only inflates the situation and makes it less likely to achieve their aims. And and how have you seen the police using the law how does she specifically know Indian to security secure the forces detention are losing of, their power of suspects who have been released or are likely to be released on bail? So a lot of these laws are vague or have... Uh, don't define what national security means or a threat to uh, the Indian state. And so they've been yeah, uh, India's you know, the largest abused democracy. by security forces to um, arbitrarily detain not just political leaders, but also activists, and in some cases children. Um, there's no potential for recourses, and any of the few who have spoken up have either then found themselves um, harassed or their families uh, threatened to after the fact. Have you found in your work that uh, even the the um, requirement that the Indian government has people sign bond bondage as a condition for their release requires them to never again enter into political activities? Is that is that accurate? Yes, and we've recorded in several instances of that and actually seen the Shida ourselves. Um, and from embassy perspective, that's a violation of political speech and freedom of expression. Absolutely. And tell me why the police favor the use of the Public Safety Act over criminal proceedings, especially following the revocation of the special status in Jammu and Kashmir. So for the 42 years of its existence, um, the Public Safety Act has been used for things like administrative detentions um, and multiple violations of human rights. And so, it, it, you know, as I was saying before, and as you mentioned the quote, um, it's a way of circumventing the criminal, um, you know, process that's in place and in proceedings um, in one that is a lot more easier for them to circumvent the rule of law yeah. in India. She's only so the Indian government claims that, that people are being released the expeditiously be and that things are returning too. to normal. By Amnesty International's estimates, roughly how many people remain in detention without charge? Is it security forces or Pakistan's Thousands. terrorists? Um, and those are the like, ones that we, know we heard about. hundreds no. earlier. What is what? Do you, what would Casualties. you say? I, I remember hearing that, and yeah. I thought that that estimate was far too low. Yeah. Um, and our documentation on the ground says otherwise. Um, and those are just the ones that we know of, um, because a lot of these people have been intimidated um, or silence for fear of reprisals. So thousands of people are still being held in detention. And, and if, you, if you just make this brief, because I have another question here, but um, what, what do you think are the most important things that Congress should be doing around advocating for fair treatment of those detained in, in Jammu and Kashmir? I mean, holding more hearings like this, raising more letters, resolutions, asking for more congressional visits. The Indian government cares about what the U.S. Congress has to say. Um, so the more noise it can yeah. make, the more powerful. And the more Indians Thank in you. the U.S. need to make some noise On Tuesday well. of last week, over a dozen women were arrested for holding a sit-in in Srinagar against the ending of the state's special status. And media reports indicate that they were released on Thursday after posting personal bonds. The police chief in Srinagar reportedly responded that no further protests can take place. And so I direct this to um, Dr. Call. Yeah. What do are they the forget about the of this crackdown on protests in Srinagar? And do you expect that peaceful protests will continue? Um, yeah, and how come hard. nobody from the Indian side is speaking up? She's not asking anyone that's not with her own opinion. But who is she really fighting for? Not India. And 
you know, victims of 9-11, those, the groups she is, she's going after are more for democratic votes, more for democratic party, you know, making sure Muslims are, are being saved. The Somalians are being saved. Illegals are being saved. Um, you know, pro-women, so going after, you know, the abortion card. That she's definitely doing um, all the things that kind of sways the vote. You know, I feel like since Trump has met with Modi, the Democrats have pulled out all of their, the stops against India since, since he's been here. You know, Indian Americans feel betrayed and cheated. She is uh, Indian born and is not doing anything positive for India. She's actually trying to put resolutions on Kashmir and, you know, not even doing a lot of positive things for here in the U.S., it seems like. And if you guys have different, please let us know. But why should Indians vote for her? Are am any Democrats? I feel like the only one right now that is Tulsi Gubbard. She is the only one running for president that we would vote for. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight as to what's happening here in the U.S., especially with the Democratic Party and especially Pramila J. Paul's, uh, you know, resolutions on Kashmir. So if you don't agree with her, like we don't, uh, call her. If you live in her district, make sure you're not voting for her again, but let her know your opinions on Kashmir and, you know, if you feel cheated as well. If you guys like her and can find us some lovely positive things that she's done for India, for Indian Americans here, being one herself, please send us some links because we could not find anything. You know, right now, last three years ago when the elections were coming up, we were voting for the Democratic Party, the only one in our neighborhood, by the way. Um, we have a Clinton sign still outside of our house, and we'll do a different video on that. That's a whole other story. But we sent money to the Clinton Foundation. We sent money. We got the flags. We posted it outside our house. The only one in the entire neighborhood that had a Clinton sign, actually probably the only one in our um town because i didn't see any even not anywhere near where we live um f and f a little bit fearful because um we were afraid that somebody might take it so we actually pinned it down but we were very for the democratic party because we felt like they usually did support immigrants my husband being one and and they usually had good positive things but like i said before i feel like since Trump and Modi now are buddy buddies. I think the Democrats have shifted their weights to other people that will help them win the election. And Indian Americans are not one of them. So, and you know, them talking about gen genocide in Kashmir is just absurd. So hopefully you guys get an idea of what kind of news is coming out here in the US and maybe you guys can send some more positive things this way that we can, um, you know, keep spreading the word. And uh, yeah, I uh, hope you guys thought this was enlightening. And uh, hopefully we can, um, you know, do some more good things, at least getting the word out there because we want positive things for India. And we want, especially the people in the US and the media that's out there saying good things about India. And we're not getting a lot of that. So we are trying to spread some good, hopefully, in all of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe. Join our wonderful Jan family. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.